Hey everybody, it's Greg Flyshaker, Greg Fly to my friends, and I'm here today with another video. This one is about making fresh bucatini with einkorn flour pasta. As the clock showed you there, it's a little bit after 20 after 2 on it's a weekend afternoon for me, but it doesn't really matter. We'll see that I can make this bucatini in under 40 minutes, 45 minutes, give or take. And uh, as always, when I make this kind of video, I, I start with everything put away just like I would um, if I weren't making a video. So got the mixer out and I scooped out two cups, not barely, you know, not properly measured, but two cups of einkorn flour. And I got eight eggs out. And of the eight, I use two whole eggs and then six egg yolks. And you can keep the egg whites if you want, if you're going to do something with them. I set them aside for this. And uh, I did set aside a little bit extra flour just in case I was going to need it. So, yeah, remember to raise your bowl there if you're trying to make pasta. So the two cups of flour, one glug of olive oil that I just put in there, and the eggs. And you just sort of have to match the amount of flour to the amount of eggs. So if your um, eggs are small or large, you have to take that into consideration. So I tried to show you right there by moving the camera. It's going to start out pretty shaggy. It's going to take a couple minutes for the moisture and the eggs to get through to all the flour. But the way I do this with the einkorn flour and this many egg yolks, I skip the rest in the refrigerator. I just keep it here, keep going. See, it cleaned the whole bowl out, and now I have really fresh uh, pasta. And what that take? 10 minutes or so? And now I'm going to get the attachment. So this is a uh, extruder from KitchenAid. It fits right onto the, I'm going, to, I'm going to show you. Here you go. This is for Bucatini. So you get different plates. I don't know if you can see it. It actually says it on there. Well, that's the inside. That's what it looks like getting pushed through. And then there are different plates for different kinds of noodles. This is the Bucatini noodle. And it'll make 12 strands at a time. And I got this for the holidays. I wanted to give it a try. You can see there's a little screw in there. So you're going to feed your pasta in from the top. It's going to shove it through that plate and uh, extrude the the pasta. So this is bucatini is, is a noodle with a hole through the middle of it. So the idea is you make your pasta. You can't have it too wet. You can't have it too dry. It's got to be just right. Lucky for me, my basic fresh einkorn pasta recipe. Uh, seems to fit the bill. So I've done this since then with a fusilli. It also works just the same pasta recipe. So you cut it into small little pieces, something they, uh, they being KitchenAid suggests about walnut size. Basically it just needs to fit in that hopper at the top and then you shove it down. And um, if you read the instructions, which I actually did this time, I don't always, um, they have different speeds suggested for different kinds of pasta. So it depends what you're making. So for instance, fusilli was, I think you put it at three, but for bucatini, uh, you turn it all the way up to high. So whatever your, your KitchenAid is, I think it's eight or maybe 10. And then you give it a good shove. The first one takes the longest because it's got to work all the way down that corkscrew or the drive shaft, whatever that's called. And then you can see it clearly um, coming out. And there's a little handle, like right in the middle of my belly, that you can cut the noodles with like that. All right, so you just slice it off. And then, as I said, there's 12. There's, see, there's a hole right down the middle of it. So it's a, it's a much thicker, um, heavier noodle. And there are certainly certain recipes that call for bucatini as opposed to spe spe sorry, spaghetti or linguine or fettuccine or something. It's a very heavy, meaty, I don't know if meaty is the right word, hearty pasta. So I'm going to get 12 out of each cut. And basically, um, I don't know how long a bucatini noodle is supposed to be. I just went until it reached the counter or that silver, you know, the foot of the mixer. And then I cut it and I just hang them up to dry. I wasn't going to cook dinner until a couple hours later, so I didn't want to just leave them hanging on the counter. I'm just taking my time. I, I don't know how to throw them up super quickly. I'm sure that there's an Italian grandmother somewhere who is making fun of my method here, but I just push them out until they reach the counter, cut them, hang them up until I get through all the pasta. Now you're going to have some leftover pasta that can't make it all the way out through. So there, there is some waste, but uh, for the privilege of being able to make bucatini and other extruded, just giving you a, a look right down the the shaft there, the 
the hopper, the feeder. Uh, but this really opens up the door to all sorts of different pastas. And cleanup's a little bit of a, a pain. Uh, those, the extruder plate, right, is obviously going to have a little bit of gunk left over that you're going to have to either let it dry and, and peel out, or they comes with a like a little tool, looks like a little needle, and you'll poke it, and eventually it'll come out. But it's it's not too bad. I think it's totally worth it. My biggest concern is that I wasn't going to be able to actually force the pasta through, and it, it goes through, at least this pasta recipe it goes through quite nicely. So yeah, that's about it. Take it apart. They give you a little wrench. And you'll see that there's a little bit left over. See, it's hard to get every little piece out because it needs the pressure from the pasta above it to push the pasta out below it. And at some point, there's no pasta above to shove it all the way through. And so you kind of run out of downward pressure to force the extruder through. So I'm really trying to you can see the tool I just moved there. I'm really trying to get the most out of it. I think I'll get a couple half noodles left. They're hard to see through. There we go. So a couple more little half noodles. And I think that's about the best you're going to do as you get to the end. You could always do a double recipe or however much pasta you want to go. And it's three o'clock. So I did, I made the fresh pasta and pressed the bucatini in less than 40 minutes. And there you go. That's just a picture of hanging up and drying, a little bit left over at the end. And then here's a picture of a meal I made with the bucatini. So thanks for following along. If you have any questions, visit me on my blog and I'll see you there.